All right, hey guys, welcome back. I've gotten a couple questions about the fuel condition lever in the PC12, so I thought I would jump into X-Plane here and make a quick video about the condition lever down here, what it's used for and how it works. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of confusion about this because it does look kind of like the mixture knob in a piston uh, airplane. However, it works completely differently. The only similarity between the two is that when you bring this lever all the way to the aft stop, it does shut down the engine, but uh, that's about where the similarities end. So uh, this lever basically just controls the idle speed of the engine, and there are three detents. There's cutoff feather, ground idle, and flight idle. When we first get into the airplane, this lever will be in cutoff feather, the engine will be shut down, and when we go to start the engine, we'll use the electric starter to turn the engine, and once we have enough rotational speed, we'll introduce fuel. So we're looking at the NG up here, and if you haven't seen my video about starting the PC-12, I'll link to that so you can check that out. But uh, basically how we start any turbine engine is we just get the engine spinning and then we, we want it to spin up fast enough to where it's sucking in enough air that when we introduce fuel that uh, we can have a light off on the engine and it will spool up and, and become the process becomes self-sustaining. So when we're starting the engine we want to see 13 to 18 percent NG. We really want it to be as high as it can go to light the engine off. Usually it'll top out somewhere between 18, 19, or 20 percent NG right here. This NG is just the rotational speed of the engine, the RPM of the engine expressed in a percentage of its maximum rotation. It can go a little over 100, but um, this is primarily what we're looking at here when we're dealing with the condition lever. So uh, once we get that 13 to 18 uh, percent NG during the, the start sequence, we'll introduce uh, fuel by moving this lever out of the cutoff feather detent up and over a gate and into the ground idle detent. And the sim doesn't have this modeled exactly correctly. In the rail airplane, there's actually a black tab right here that's a guard that's spring-loaded to the left, and you've got to um, move that to the right with your thumb when you're bringing this lever aft. It's not a problem when you're moving it forward, but the guard is there to prevent an accidental shutoff in flight. Uh, but that tab isn't even modeled in here at all. But at any rate, uh, you do still have to lift this uh, lever up and over a gate out of the cutoff feather position and into the ground idle position, and it'll just it'll seat down into that detent with a nice solid click, and that will introduce fuel and then light the engine off during the start sequence. At ground idle, the NG should be somewhere between about 63 or 65 percent and the sim it's not modeled exactly correctly it's a little bit lower than that as you can see here uh, and then the reason that we we keep the engine in ground idle on the ground is because it keeps the engine running smoothly it keeps the propeller and the approved rpm it turns the generators fast enough to supply electrical current to the components we need but we're not wasting fuel by turning the engine faster than that because we don't really have much of a need for bleed air on the ground <clears throat> now once we take off we'll move the condition lever up here into flight idle and again there is a detent that it'll seat into in flight idle as we're sliding that lever forward we don't have to um, move up out of a gate or anything we just push it forward and it'll seat into the flight idle detent and that'll bring the NG somewhere up to between 75 or 80 percent again it's a little bit lower than that in the sim it's not quite realistic but somewhat close and that'll just spool the engine up <clears throat> And uh, the reason that we want the condition lever in flight idle uh, between any time between takeoff and landing, so the entire time that the airplane's in the air, is because we really want to have more bleed air for pressurization and for the de-ice boots if we need those while we're flying. So, you know, remember that when the engine is, is turning, it's ingesting air mostly for combustion, but it's also some of that is getting routed away from the engine for bleed air as bleed air that'll come into the cabin and pump up the cabin. It'll pump up the ice boots if we need to run those. So we need a lot of bleed air in flight. So that's why we don't want the engine to idle too slowly, otherwise we won't get enough bleed air. So the only thing the condition lever does is it controls the idle position of the engine. So if I have the PCL, which is the power control lever, the, the throttle right here, at the idle stop like it is right now, <coughs> the idle NG will not go lower than where it's set based on the condition lever position. So if I'm in flight idle, I can bring the PCL all the way back to its stop and the engine should not spool down below about 75 or 80 percent NG, so I'm going to have plenty of bleed air and generator current and all the stuff that I need. It's also handy in flight because, especially during approach and landing, <clears throat> when we're using lower power settings, if we have to go around, say we're on short final and an aircraft taxis out onto the runway in front of us and we need to make a quick go around, 
you really want the engine to be spooled already so that we don't have that lag time. There's a little bit of spool time even <clears throat> in a smaller turbine engine like this and we don't really want to have to wait on the engine to spool up to get that power. So it's nice to have the engine already pre-spooled and, and have that power be readily available should we need it. So as soon as we land and we're um, out of reverse, if we needed to use reverse and we're almost slowed down to taxi speed and we don't need the engine spooled up anymore, we'll bring that condition lever back to ground idle. We do have to lift the condition lever slightly up and forward out of the detent and back and let it click down into the ground idle detent. And then we'll taxi in to the ramp at ground idle and then when we're ready to shut the engine down, got to make sure it's been at least two minutes for the hot section to cool down in the engine, but then we'll at that point shut the engine down by just bringing this condition lever up. We pull it up, push the tab that again isn't modeled here in the sim, but push that to the right with the thumb and then just pull that all the way back and seat it into the cutoff feather position and that does three things. First it chokes the engine to fuel to shut it down. It de-energizes the low fuel pressure system so that we're not seeing a, a nuisance cast or cause light when we're shutting the engine down and it also feathers the prop which is where we want it for shutdown. So. Uh, that's really all it does. It just basically controls the idle uh, idle speed of the engine and uh, that's what we use it for. So in the in the NGX, it's full FADEC. Uh, we, the condition lever is actually gone. It's all integrated into the PCL, which is pretty pretty handy dandy. So uh, Anyway, hope that clears up the questions guys. Thanks for those. Uh, leave me your questions in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.